Hi, in this video we're going to show you how to download and install the free version of Macrium Reflect and then show you how to make a Windows system image backup and then we'll go through the restore process as well. So if you don't know, Macrium Reflect used to be free but now they charge for it. I think it's like $50 a year now. But you can still download the older version, version 8, and use that one for free because that was technically free when it was out. All right, so to do so, obviously you can't get it from their website, so we're going to go to the archive.org website, and then we have it right here. So we have some download options, the torrent and the Windows executable, so we're going to download the Windows executable. Just save it on the desktop here. All right, so let's go through the installation process real quick. All right, so we'll say yes to the UAC prompt, so you'll need to have admin rights to install it. Not going to worry about writing anything to a log. All right, click on Next. Accept the agreement. All right, so we need to use it for personal use. And then we need to check this box saying we're only using it for personal use since you can't use the free version for commercial use. We're not going to register it since we're not buying it. All right, so you don't need to install any of these for what we're doing. We are going to do the desktop shortcut, but that's optional as well. And then you could also change the installation directory if you like. All right, click on install. This will take a minute. All right, so you might get this option here to update it. And if you do update it, it doesn't seem to want to update to 8.1, so don't bother with that. And if you click on Configure, you could turn off notifications. You could disable the daily check for updates, which is probably a good thing since I don't think it's going to be updatable. All right, click on Finish. We'll just have it launch the program. Okay, so here's what we got here. We're going to back up our C drive, Windows drive to this backups folder, which is empty right now. All right, so we have some options here. So we could image selected disks on this computer. So if you want to, you know, image a secondary drive or something like that, you could use this option. Then we have this option here to create an image of the partitions required to backup and restore Windows. That's what we're going to do. And then you also have the file and folder backup option. And then you have clone this disk which will make a clone of a drive to another drive so we did a video on how to do this for cloning your Windows drive if you want to check that out and then we have the image this disk option as well okay so we're going to choose all the partitions on our Windows drive here we're going to pick a folder here make a new folder might want to put a date if you're going to do more than one. You could also do it to a CD DVD burner if you have one. And you have the alternative locations that you could check out as well. All right, then we have some advanced options for compression. So if you want to save some space, uh, you can compress it more, but it's going to make the backup take longer. And then you can put no compression if you want to make it quicker, but you're going to be using up more space. And we have the intelligent sector copy, which is recommended. So this option does not copy the page file or hibernation file because those could take up a lot of space. And then you have the option to make an exact copy if you do want to include that type of information. And we have file size. Probably best to leave it on automatic. You could assign a password to it. Uh, you can verify it when it's done. We're going to leave this unchecked just for the sake of time. And you could also uncheck this if you want to save some time. So this will make sure that the file system is intact before making the backup. So the default for the file name prefix is to leave it uh, the same as the backup set image ID. So we're going to do that. Then you could add some comments to it. And then if you want to have the computer shut down or restart uh, when the job is done, you could do that as well.
All right, so once you have everything set here, we'll just click on Next. So if you want to schedule it, you could do that. So if you want to do it on a regular basis. So one thing to keep in mind here is you're going to need a lot of room on your backup drive if you're going to be uh, doing scheduling. Then you can see we have full differential and incremental options. Then you can see here you could have it purge the oldest backup set if less than so much space is left on the target drive. So that way it'll automatically delete the older versions so you don't run out of space. You have options here for your backup plan, you know, grandfather, father, son, differential, incremental, and so on. We're just going to do this one time, but if you want to schedule it, you might want to come check out these options. And if we click here, we have the same options as we saw before. All right, so this gives us a summary here. So we're going to go ahead and click on Finish and let the process begin. All right, so if you want to save this backup definition file to reuse later on, you could do this and give it a name. That way you don't have to go through all the options. So I'm just going to uncheck it because I'm just doing this one time for demonstration. And then we're going to run this backup now. All right, so the backup has started. So I'm going to pause the video and then I'll be back when it's done. All right, so the backup is complete. Took about five minutes. Close this out. Let's check out our backup file. All right, so it's 19 gigs. And our C drive itself here is 30 gigs. All right, then we can check out our existing backups here. So if we choose this option here, we can open an image or backup file in, in Explorer here. All right, so here's our drive that we have the backup in. So we just need to find the C drive, which is right here. And if you want to enable access to restricted folders, you can check this box or make it writable. But it says these changes are temporary and will be discarded, so click OK. It assigns to the drive letter, most likely the next available one. All right, so here's our image right here. So if we needed to get into an old backup file, let's say to get a file out of it, we could do that. And then once you're done, you can come back here and detach the backup image so it's not left open. Okay, so now before we restore it, let's make a new file on the desktop just to prove it works here. So once we restore the backup image, this should be gone since the backup is going to be before this file was made here. Okay, so we have our backup image here. We just have the one. Otherwise, you'd have to pick the right one. So we can just click on Restore here. All right, so here's our source from the Windows Backup folder here. And then our destination going back to the C drive. And of course, you could verify it as well if you want to take a little extra time, but we're going to skip that for the sake of time. Okay, we're going to click on Next. So it gives us a summary here. So if everything looks good, click on Finish. All right, so you're going to get this message here. This restore must be completed in the Windows PE Rescue Environment. Do you want to build Rescue Media and add a boot menu now to automatically restore? So we're going to say yes to that. All right, so if this takes a couple minutes here, we'll probably pause the video once again. All right, so now we have some restore options here. So if we check this box, automatically boot into the Windows PE environment here. This is option is only available if you have enabled the Windows boot menu option in Macaroon Reflect. So after restore, we could have it reboot the computer, shut down, or nothing. All right, so we're going to select Run from Windows PE to automatically run this restore the next time Windows PE starts. Now we're going to restart the computer. All right, so it looks like it's starting Windows, but it's actually not. All right, so it's initializing the process here.
All right, so automatic restore is about to start. You cancel it. Otherwise, just let it time out or click on continue. All right, so now it's doing the restore process, and the default is to reboot, but you can change that if you want. So we're going to leave it on reboot. So we will pause the video and then be back for the next step. All right, so PC will now reboot, or you can click cancel to resume the session. So we'll just let it time out here and reboot. All right, let's log in and see what we got. All right, so you can see the text file we created is gone. So this tells us it restored the backup that was made before that text file was made. All right, so let's open up the program here one more time. And you can see we still have our existing backup here. So if we need to go back to this image again, we could do so. Then if we go to the top here, we have an option to create rescue media. So you could create an ISO file, make a CD, or add an option to the boot menu. So if this is something you're going to use all the time, this is kind of a nice feature. Because then every time you boot up your computer, you'll have an option to uh, do a restore. So let's try that real quick. We'll click on build. All right, so I actually sped up the process there so you could see exactly what was going on. So obviously it's going to take a little longer than what you just saw there, but not by too much. It was only a few minutes. All right, so we'll click on OK. Close this out. So now let's restart the computer and see what it looks like. All right, so now you can see every time we start the computer, we'll have an option to go into Windows 11 or into the Macrium Reflect System Recovery, which will take you to the same section we were just in uh, to restore one of your system image backups. But the only downside to this is that you're going to have to see this menu every time you start up, but it should default to uh, Windows 11 if you don't click this, and you could also go here to change the settings. So right now it's 10 seconds, and the current default is Windows 11. All right, so we'll click on Windows 11 here to go back into Windows. All right, let's go back into Macroom again. To the Rescue Media. And now if we come here, we could click on Remove Boot Menu if we don't want to have that. Let's click on Remove. And I'll go through the similar process, except much quicker, and now it's gone. And of course, you have the other options here to create an ISO file that you could burn to a flash drive, you know, like Rufus or something like that, and then boot up with that if you need to restore the image, or of course, make a DVD or CD if you still have a CD burner. All right, so there is your basic overview on how to download and install Macrium Reflect Free and then also how to create and restore a Windows system image backup. All right, so I'll put a link in the description where you can download the app here, and then you can try it out for yourself. All right, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe.